are uh, the closest ones to the Gulf and are in areas where uh, they are located are in one of the largest deltas and it is the largest <coughs> delta in the United States in the continuous uh, 48 states and it's the fastest disappearing delta in the world which means sustainability for the communities and the communities themselves uh, being subject to cultural and genocide and the sustaining uh, value of those ecosystems being totally depleted, which has a global effect. And so in the conversation with the communities, what we came up with in response to um, Levy's comment was that there are issues of uh, sacrificial zones. And uh, we are one of those sacrificial zones, like many other places around the world that they're talking about in this report to eradicate poverty. Well, to eradicate poverty, we need to eradicate sacrificial zones. And those sacrificial zones take the environment as a mining resource uh, to, to take away from the people who are in those sacrificial zones. So the people no longer have control over those resources. Those resources like oil, uh, diamonds, whatever they are in the area where the people are, they are mined out and the resources go out and the wealth goes out. And the people that are left in those areas of sacrificial zones are the people who are sacrificed as well in this, in the, as being tools for that economy. And they don't want to be continue to be, have tools of full employment so that they can continue to uh, harvest or mine that which goes to the exploitation of their own area. And so it almost becomes an oxymoron to say, let's have full employment. Uh, what we need to do is to reimagine that new heaven and new earth that we talk about and think about it as reclaiming the commons. And as we reclaim the commons and reclaim the sovereignty to the commons, we, re uh, we then uh, reclaim the dignity of the connection of the people to the commons. The people in the land and the environment cannot be separated. We cannot talk about anything as far as sustainability and separate the environment from the social issues. Uh, it's just impossible. And as we talk about that, then we can start talking about the control over resources, the sovereignty of food, and the production for the health and well-being of the people that are in an area, the education or whatever it is for the well-being of the people in the area, not for the extractors. Well, there's a lot to come back to you uh, on. Uh, you've raised the whole issue of the global commons. Mm -hmm. Again, the notion, global commons or have always referred to tangible things. The environment, the, the rivers, the oceans, the minerals. Public or but the values have not been seen as public goods. So I'd like to coax your imagination in the conversation later on about the provision of not just common goods, but common public goods. In the, new, in the imagination in the, in the international community, common public goods now include human rights. So food is as desirable, or human rights should be as desirable as food. So how do we make the provision of, of goods and common public goods so that you, you have human rights to access that food, that uh, clean air? And I, I'm glad that Christina raised that. Uh, I'll call on Jeffrey Huffines to give his first take uh, after hearing uh, these people.